It's time to do 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 some campaign designing. Welcome everyone, again, to Game to Campaign, the series where I take a game, take its lore, mechanics, and other relevant media, and give you tips and ideas on how you can use them to flesh out your own TTRPG story and campaign. And in this episode, we're covering the first of hopefully many trading card games on this channel, Yu-Gi-Oh! So the basic premise of this game is that you construct a deck that's anywhere between 40 to 60 cards and then summon monsters from your deck as well as use spell and trap cards to defeat your enemy and reduce their life points down to zero. Each monster card has a level and in order to get your higher level cards out, you'll either need to tribute one or more of your monsters, special summon it or activate a special effect to bring it to the field. There are even a bunch of categories and types of monsters as well. And speaking of some of these monsters, each one is kitted out with attack and defense points, and many of them have special effects that can completely turn the tide of battle if used right. And for many of these monsters, they already come equipped with their own unique lore. And with this aspect of lore, there are two parts that I want to cover here. One is the individual lore of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, and the second is the individual lore of the cards within the game. So now, getting the harder lore out of the way, the lore of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the game, simply put, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, aka Dual Monsters cards, are said to be monsters sealed away in cards from another dimension that we, the players, use when we play the game. According to the anime and other source material, the monsters basically have their own dimension and we can draw on that power to fight other players. And this is something that really comes about when we play what is referred to as a shadow game. Depending on what anime series you're watching, some of these monsters even have very close ties and inspiration from our own real world mythology and the biggest ones that I can think of off the top of my head are definitely the Egyptian god cards. And now, the lore about the monsters. A majority of cards have their own narrative and story that's either made apparent in the card's flavor text or with its interactions with other cards in the game. Using the cards, we can have a strong springboard to creating interesting creatures and even NPCs to throw into our games. And using other sorts of interesting spells and trap cards, we can even flesh out our campaign's world completely with unique items, magical effects, and even locations. Taking all of this together, how do we bring this concept into a campaign? Looking at the basic lore and even the lore of the individual cards, we have a lot of different roads we can take, so just bear with me as I explain them. For starters though in all of these, we have the premise of a monster world and a physical world, but I invite you to use some of these ideas and even combine them as you see fit. So option A. Within your campaign, monsters are leaking out from their dimension and are causing havoc within the world of the players. However, your players can save the land and stop these monsters from causing any more destruction by sealing them inside a certain object, or beating them into submission and then you can gain the ability to call on their power. However, much like in the anime, the more you call on their power, the more tired it makes you. In this way, you can decide if your players will have to spend either a hit die, spell slots, or some other relevant in-game resources equal to the level of the monster summoned. And if you're feeling spicy, you as the GM can even let your players pick one level 1 Yu-Gi-Oh card as their personal guardian slash helper. And using this starting concept, you can expand this into how are the monsters leaking into your world. Maybe there's a cult that aims to bring in these monsters and hopes to reign supreme if they can summon a world-ending monster and control it. Maybe these creatures are actually being brought in from other monsters that have made their homes on the material plane eons ago. In the anime and lore of Yu-Gi-Oh, we see that some of these monsters are far from these mindless beasts, but actually really intelligent. These could be the BBEGs within your campaign, slowly trying to conquer the mortal world and subjugate all life within this plane. And as a final option within this set, in an interesting twist, you could have the players need to journey into the monster world in order to solve these problems. Instead of the monsters leaking into your world, the players and other NPCs will actually leak into the monster world having your adventuring party cross into the realm of monsters and then have to escape it. And this can be a particularly interesting option if it's used in conjunction with any of the other options that I've already mentioned. And now for my second premise and option, you could lead a campaign very much so inspired by the flavor and lore of the cards. Same world building, same everything, except the players are the actual dual monsters. Now granted this option like others could work well when combined with the other options that I mentioned, but this is one is a bit more challenging for the players themselves because this is where builds come in. And now we've brought up things like inspired builds and you know character builds and even power builds to a certain extent. And if your players have never tried themed character builds before, just you know other 
sorts of character builds before, this can be somewhat challenging for them. But if they're feeling up for the task, they can have their PCs based around specific Yu-Gi-Oh monsters. They can design characters based around famous cards like Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Dark Magician, or even just other archetypes and cards that they'd be interested in. And I also just want to preface this too, Yu-Gi-Oh has tons of resources to work with. Yu-Gi-Oh as a game has existed for over 20 years, and there are thousands of different cards that exist by this point. You can very easily take an existing card and throw it in as a monster for your party to fight. If you're doing an online campaign, you've got plenty of art you can make tokens out of, and if you're doing an in-person campaign, you can do some arts and crafts using some old copies of cards that you have that you might not mind taking pieces from and then using as little tokens on the battlefield. I know what I just said might be sacrilege to some people, but trust me, those very common cards really start to pile up after a while. The campaign as a whole can also be very adaptable in length. You can take this idea as a small-scale adventure and have the party stop one specific monster that's been running amok, or you can have the campaign be more spaced out and have a deeper plot depending on how much you want to develop the concept of your world. And not only is the length of a Yu-Gi-Oh! style campaign very adaptable, but also the theme is as well. Due to the nature of how many different types of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards there are, you can make campaigns for nearly any setting. You want an aquatic campaign? Congrats! Would you like sea serpent, fish, or aqua monsters for that game? Dragon themed? We've got dragon and worm monsters. You want a sci-fi campaign? We've got psychic, alien, and machine monsters. Trust me, whatever you're aiming for, there's a monster category that will fit it perfectly within Yu-Gi-Oh! But anyways though, that's all that I have for taking the theme of Yu-Gi-Oh! and making a campaign out of it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it gave you some really fun ideas. And if it did, then please subscribe for even more gaming and TTRPG content. And in the meantime, keep smiling, keep scheming, and I'll see all of you next time.